Let's get more on NVIDIA and the chip space. Joining me now to discuss is Matt Bryson of Wedbush Securities. Matt, thanks for being with us. Um, we know that NVIDIA has this incredible advantage, this ecosystem. The question is, can it keep that dominance? What do you think? I, I think it, it certainly can for the, the foreseeable future. So you, you head into 2025, um, I think the largest customers are all teed up to buy substantial amounts of Blackwell uh, and, and VC, NVL72 systems. Uh, beyond that, um, of course, you always have to keep innovating, uh, right? So there, mm -hmm. there's a need to create more energy efficient chips. Uh, there's a need to create better chips. And so they'll certainly have to execute around that. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, as we've seen in these industries again and again, one or two companies who establish a leadership position, they tend to hold that leadership position. Right, and NVIDIA has done a good job of doing that and building out its moat, becoming more than just a hardware company. Um, but, you know, over the last few weeks, we've been getting more on chip ambitions from the mega caps that could potentially put them, if not in direct competition with NVIDIA, perhaps reduce their reliance a little bit. What kind of impact do you think that will have, if any? Yeah, you, you, had, you had Marvell talking about that. Uh, two days ago, right, at their, or yesterday, I'm sorry, at their um, AI event where they were talking about- And Google. This, this cut, yeah, uh, this, this custom chip build uh, opportunity growing faster than the AI opportunity overall. Um, I, I think NVIDIA is able to charge a premium uh, for their product. And what the large cloud players have done consistently is they've, built their own infrastructure in order to gain gain a cost advantage. So I, I think to some extent, yes, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, uh, Meta, they're all going mm -hmm. to produce their own chips. They're going to be great for certain instances. Um, having said that, when you think about enterprises who want to use these, these products, um, they're bringing on people who are versed in CUDA. Um, and so NVIDIA has made it easier for those enterprises to turn to NVIDIA. No. Okay, what about the other side of this, Matt? NVIDIA obviously has just gone parabolic over the last few years because of its place in the AI race. You've seen the mega caps and you've seen the semis really be the winners of this platform shift. But Arista Networks today, an example of what happens if you get a little overhyped or someone pours cold water on your proposition. So as we head into earnings and semis have really been leading the market broadly higher, what is the risk here in particular for NVIDIA that just continues to have to clear a higher and higher bar. Yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, Nvidia's got, got in an off quarter, right? So they're they're going to report a, a month from now, roughly. Um, before then, I, I think a lot of the the semiconductor companies that you're going to see come out with numbers when they talk about AI. I think they're going to talk about their AI businesses um, or their businesses related to AI doing better. Um, and, and I also think that we're starting to see a, a pickup in standard servers, um, which also has a positive influence on a lot of the semi space. Um, and so generally, I, I think companies who are tied to AI, um, who are tied to the server space, they're going to give us relatively better news. Hmm. Um, and, and so I, I don't think that there's any problems for NVIDIA this earnings season. Okay, what about some of the other names, though? Like, could another risk to networks happen? Are there any names that are vulnerable that you think have been overhyped? Um, yeah, so a lot of the names in my space, um, when, when I think about the memory names, for instance, I, I, I think I, you're on the other side of things. So I, I think HBM demand, DDR5 demand for servers has been better than expected, that they're struggling to, to meet demand. Um, and, and so if, if anything, I, I think expectations are, are, are too low. Um, with networking and storage, um, I, I, the storage names, I, I think, again, what, what I'm hearing is that the way that storage environments are configured in enterprises, that it doesn't work well with AI. And so there's mm -hmm. actually a need to go and, and refresh storage. Um, so I, I think things are relatively good there, server names. Um, so uh, Adele and HPE, yeah. um, I, I think they're finally getting GPUs. So you'll see strong results from them on the server side. And, and networking is a little bit outside my ballywick, if you will. But I, I mean, having said that, if you're putting in more servers, eventually you have to connect them. And so um, I, I'm not sure what was said on Arista today, but if this is a weaker quarter or next quarter is a weaker quarter, um, at some point, uh, all, the, all, those, all those servers that are, yeah. that are being added, they have to be connected.